to meet Sarah Johnson. Sarah is married to William and works at the local hospital. They recently moved into a trendy, state-of-the-art smart apartment. Never before was it so easy for her to feel secure and protected, to stay healthy and balanced, and to keep in touch with her family and friends. Of course, she's in control of which personal information she shares. To clear her mind, she decides to have a short run. Now this is William, Sarah's husband. In contrast with Sarah, William prefers to spend his leisure time on more passive pursuits. He likes to relax with his 3D entertainment system. William is trying to combine a business trip with a short break with Sarah. In the background, sophisticated algorithms produce an optimal match between a variety of service offerings and their personal requirements. Of course, planning this trip takes up limited bandwidth. Meanwhile, Nigel, his upstairs neighbor, is playing an online 3D game. And Linda, the single woman downstairs, is caught up in an interactive dating show. Fortunately, the intelligent network smartly reconfigures itself, ensuring that everyone has the required bandwidth. But if everyone in the world starts watching the opening ceremony of the Olympics at the same time, you need intelligent peer-to-peer -peer distribution mechanisms to stop the global internet from getting bogged down. Did I mention yet that Sarah is an epileptic? Her vital signs are constantly monitored by sensors in her clothing. She is alerted whenever there is an increased chance of a seizure. And that is exactly what is about to happen in three, two, one. All Sarah's relevant data is sent to a control room. Here the data are interpreted and evaluated by Dr. Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell decides to alert William, who, of course, is registered as one of Sarah's caretakers. While William is rushing on his way over, the control room informs him of Sarah's status and the exact coordinates of his wife's location. How are you doing? I'm fine. You're here. Whoa! What's that? Firefighter Randy McLovin has been sent to the park by his chief to take stock of the current situation and any potential hazards. Hi, Randy. How are you doing? Not too bad. I discovered during a safety check last month that several sections of the roof aren't covered with fire-resistant material. Could you check this and uh, give me a status update? Then I'll possibly send a specialist team your way. All right, Stephen. I will. Meanwhile, the city is still in panic and the network is down. Hang up and try your call again. However, the different emergency services in the disaster area are quickly building up a large, secure network. The network connects the services on location both with each other and with the control center. Communication technology has become a critical factor in many sectors of our economy and society. To a large extent, what you have just seen is still in the future. The gap between what is technologically feasible and what is required needs to be bridged through concerted efforts. The world of tomorrow doesn't create itself. Our work is still in progress. The ambient life.